Hey guys, welcome to the Drop Jaw Flies Fly Time Tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a series that we'll do throughout the winter where we can't fish very much anyways. Um, today we would normally be out fishing these flies instead of tying them. But uh, we think that our, our reservoir that we've been fishing is frozen. <laughs> and so we thought, super cold outside, we'd just do a fly tying tutorial. And we've been asked a lot um, how to tie the baby whitey fly. Um, there are so many different versions of this fly uh, that you can do, but the basics of it is going to be white pearl chenille for both bodies on the hook. We're going to show you what you know what we're going to use today in detail, but um, this is more of a cold winter month fly with the pink in there. Um, that's been working pretty well for us, and then this would be more of a summer version, and it's more olive. Uh, has the olive gold fleck rubber legs um, and if you order these online you know sometimes you'll get heads uh, that have the chartreuse eye sometimes they have the silver eye but overall the basic feeling is that it's a baby white fish or it's that's what it's that's what we're going for um, trout might who knows what they think it is but as long as it looks like food so, and they eat it. That's the, the most important thing. And they do eat this. Um, we've had uh, some of our, our guys that are, have been using this for us have caught salmon. They've caught uh, all, the, all the salmonids mostly. We're still missing a few, but this works really well, especially where white fish are present in the water that you're fishing. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, also, just like uh, materials that you can be used, and just like any fly, we use different hooks for this too. It just depends on the situation. But today, we're going to be using uh, the ubiquitous Gamakatsu uh, one knot, and it's a, the B10S Stinger. And just hold that up if you're not familiar with it. Uh, great fly. I happen to know somebody uh, at Drop Jaw Flies that got one of these stuck in their finger and they work really well. <laughs> They're hard to get out. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the baby whitey is an articulated fly, so uh, one in the vise, one on deck. We're going to be tying the, the, the uh, tail section first, so what we want to do is get our thread, of course, on the hook, and there's no real particular way to do it, just make sure that it's on there really well and it doesn't slip. I'll wrap this a, a, just a couple times up and down the shank, cut it off, and what we want to do is I like to have this gold crystal flash right on the bottom of the fly. And we're going to be pretty generous and liberal with the material today, and I'll just use uh, quite a bit of it. Take the thread back up almost to the eye. Just double this over, take it right on top, get it started, and just lay it on the shank of the hook and we'll wrap it all the way till where the shank starts to bend down. We've got, I'm going to take my scissors and cut about that much off. There's probably three quarters of an inch remaining. Okay. Now the next thing that we'll do is take some tan saddle hackle. And you can use gold saddle hackle, a light olive saddle hackle. Um, I'm going to take two pieces and we're going to match them up. There's a concave side and a convex side. Take the two concave sides, which is the dish in, so that they're dished out. Just put, and if that didn't make sense, just put the two darkest sides facing out. Match the tips up, just like that. And I'm going to take these and stick it right on top of the hook and just so that they overhang those gold crystal flash just a little bit. Take my thread, loosely take it down, secure it to the, the shank of the hook and then give it a couple more wraps. And then these are in your way so just go ahead and trim those off leave a little bit left so that you can wrap that towards the front of the hook as we put our chenille on here we don't want it to dip off have all this material right here so 
leave yourself a little bit of material and wrap that towards the eye of the hook. So we'll just keep taking this right to where it starts to slope off just a little bit. Okay, we got that set. Now we're going to take some this olive black barred saddle hackle. And you know it doesn't really matter if the tips don't match up perfect or not because in the water they they do their thing and I love the look of this so I'm gonna go up just a little bit closer to the eye of the hook this time do a loose wrap and then do your tight wraps all the way back I cut that little bit closer to the eye of the hook this time and let's get this on And I want these to stick up just a little bit past or on top of the, the uh, tan saddle hackle. So I'm going to lift those up, put a wrap right underneath those just to, just to stick them up just a little bit. And then we're going to use, use some fun material. This is Senyo's Barred Predator Wrap. This stuff is, I just love the look of it. I don't know if the fish like it or not, but I do. So I'm going to take... And seriously, don't get hung up on how much we're using. Just so you can see that there's, I don't know, six, seven strands. <laughs> I'm going to even that up a little bit. And then take it, try and find the halfway point on your thread. Double it over. And then wrap that down. And we'll put that on top and just kind of spread it out a little bit so it comes over both sides. Wrap it all down. And I don't like those to go past very far of the, uh, the saddle hackle right there. So we got a good looking tail. Now what we need to do is, uh, I always like to glue things down, you know. Call this overkill if you want to, but... Let's get some glue on that. We'll put our body on. This is just some pearl chenille. You can use whatever pearl chenille that you want to, but it, as long as it's white. I think that for this fly, white is what we use. So we'll cut about 10 to 11 inches. It's a little bit much for this fly, but for today's demonstration, that's what we're going to use. Um, I always stick it underneath the shank. I'm going to poke it under with my pointer finger and keep it underneath there. Put this last thread wrap right to where we left off with our tails. Bring my the thread forward. Wrap up over the top. And wrap pull kind of tight with your thread right here because we don't want a big bulky... Um, tail on the back side. We want to wrap it so that it's skinny here and progressively goes thicker as we go forward with the whole fly. So I don't have to quite pull as tight now. I'm going to build this so that it's a little bit thicker as I go forward towards the eye of the hook right here. Right up to the eye on this one with the, the chenille. Wrap it capture it. I usually go one, two, three. Then to lock it down, one, two, three. Cut it pretty short. And then guys, there's all kinds of ways to finish your flies off. I use this this tool um, and I've been uh, kitted uh, for it uh, quite a bit, but I've used it for so long that it's just what I use. So anyway, put this in. One, two, three. Lock. Let's do it one more time. One, two, three. Lock. And let's we'll put a little bit of glue on that thread. Keep that in place. This thing's going to get beat up, casted 100 miles an hour, chewed on by fish. Okay. And I, I think this is the fun part, this next step. The baby whitey is, is meant to mimic a baby whitefish, so they do have, the fish do have par markings, and they're gray, they could be 
uh, silver purplish looking, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're just really faint. So what I'm, we're going to do is use this Copic marker, it's W5, warm gray, number 5, and again don't get hung up if you don't have this marker uh, and you, you don't even have to use a marker but I just like the look of it so we're gonna start out gonna use the brush tip of it and we're gonna go one two three four four little marks do that on this side one two three four and then to give some contrast to that and add a little color, I'm going to use some purple metallic. And we're going to put this dot, those dots that we just did, just add a little contrast. We'll take it right in the top third, if you, whatever. I like to put it kind of in the upper part of the gray dot that we just did. So there's a little bit of color and contrast. It doesn't take very long. And if the fish don't like it, I do. So we gotta be honest with ourselves. We could go out and fish with a white woolly bugger, or a black woolly bugger, or whatever, or a white bunny strip or whatever, and, and we could probably catch fish, but um, there's a part of fly tying and being creative that is a lot of fun, and especially if you can make something that catches fish, that's even funner and this fly catches fish. Whether or not these dots make a difference I don't know but it's fun to do anyway. So we're done with the tail section. I'll just keep that close by. Do our head hook. Get that in the vise and for this because we have to wrap our wire and articulate the fly I like to speed things up in that process and use a thicker thread. So this is still the same ultra thre thread, but it's the 210. So it's a little bit thicker and it covers the hook a lot faster. So start behind the eye. I'll wrap down, wrap up. Okay, so we've got our thick 240 or 210 thread on the hook shank and now what we need to do is articulate the fly. Basically we've got, I'm using this wire today and there's a lot of different wires you could use for this fly or for articulating in general but I've got this one it's uh, breaking strength is 26 pounds and uh, that's generally what I'm looking for it has some flexibility stainless and it's coated in plastic so I like it. So what I'm going to do is not put the thread directly on top of the shank because sometimes when you do that it, the thread likes to torque it over off the side and so what I'll do is take the thread and put it on the hook shank that's closest to me just off center. I can wrap it and it's locked. It doesn't move. Just get it on the shank and keep it that way and it doesn't want to move over. I get to about this point, I'm going to take the thread and start to move it over right to the center. And I'm going to take it off the bend of the hook, off the flat part of the shank, about that far. And there, there's a lot of abouts and this close and eyeball it in fly tying. So there's no exact point, at least in my tying. You just kind of get it where you need it to go. So we've got it right there and now let's hook our two sections together so I'm going to be using two plastic pink beads and sorry they're really small you can't see them they're faceted um, you, you can use faceted bigger smaller whatever but for today I'm going to be using these pink beads so put it on second one on and we'll grab our tail section, <clears throat> slide the wire through the back. Now we just have to run this wire back through and the trick of this is to keep this wire that's going to go back through on top of the thread that's already gone through, not off to the side in either direction. So just keep a close eye on it. And it's okay to take your time on this part. 
I've got can grab the bead and just slide it over one check it looks like it's okay grab the other bead slide it over and we'll slide the back hook just until it's a pretty pretty small loop here at the end just make sure that it can swing free before you lock the thread down and it looks good so I'm going to take the thread kind of back up to the top and we'll lock this wire down bring it down until everything's pretty level till the beads top of the beads are almost level with the top of the hook is what I'm looking for and that back end's going to take a lot of uh, abuse in the casting and stripping through the water uh, fish might hit that and so really lock that section down come back I'm going to bring my thread all the way back up to almost the hook eye and the remaining part of this thread I'm going to swing it around and bring it underneath and we'll lock it down one wrap down there trim this off and uh, we use a lot of glue at drop chaw I'll get that on there now that bottom piece of uh, wire what that's gonna do is I use the uh, slotted round tungsten to weight these flies because dumbbell eyes don't work obviously with the head um, you, I can position these in different places around the hook shank, either front to back, side to side, for different action. And we put that wire underneath there, and it makes a great little anchor spot for the slot in this tungsten. So we've got our glue on the shank. Roll this over. And I'm going to step it back about an eighth of an inch from the eye of the hook, and just put a few wraps on there. And what's critical before you go any farther is to make sure that this head this head is going to fit over the top of that weight if you get the weight too close to the eye of the hook you go to put this on and it might not slide over we've got plenty of room there uh, weights in a good spot I do like to get it as close to the eye as possible to keep the weight up near the front uh, just for a little bit more diving action so I'm gonna leave it there uh, looks looks good so I pull that back off and just a little bit more coverage with this thicker thread I'm gonna make sure that that weights on there really good that looks good and then let's go ahead and tie this off and uh, I'm going to put some glue on that weight. I do like the brushable glue. Um, it doesn't have to be this brand or whatever. This just happens to be uh, Zappa Gap branded by Wopsy, but uh, really handy stuff. The other thing that I like to do is have a hair dryer. This is a mini hair dryer, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to be touching this a lot. I want to make sure that the glue is dry, it doesn't get on my hands. <laughs> Okay, that ought to, to do that. Now to wrap up and kind of hide these beads a little bit, I'm going to be using uh, Chocolate's Body Wrap in white. It has a little bit of UV. I'll just take a little bit of a section. This will be plenty to do the whole fly. So we're going to cut, we're going to trim this edge off right here so that uh, this will be free flowing like a, a little skirt and take about quarter of an inch you can use marabou for this you can use crafter for this bunch of different if you want to use EP fibers for this you can um, 
these are off in, in little posts it looks like and so what I do is just take an old toothbrush and brush that out a little bit and what I'm looking for it's about that much we're gonna put on the bottom so I'll go ahead and cut those off and I'll use though the rest of this on top so if you have a vise that can rotate slip it over I'm gonna go back to our 110 or I'm excuse me 140 size white thread ultra let's get that on I always like to use the thinner thread when I'm going to be tying in a, a lot of material in one spot because it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not bulky. So we've got our, our skirt. Let's go ahead and part that right in the middle. Now it's parted. We'll just take that, slide it onto the hook shank. And I want the tips of this to overhang my back hook by about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I don't know what that is in millimeters, so if you can just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be exact. And then we'll, we'll bring the thread right over, and these are loose wraps always to secure something, just to get the thread over the top of it. And once you do, then you can pull up and, and then secure it. And in this uh, situation, I'm going to snug up my thread so that the tip of my bobbin will fit underneath the point of this hook. Because often, if it's longer or it doesn't fit underneath here, you'll be wrapping and the edge of your thread will hit that and it will break. Got that locked down. And uh, now let's, let's put a little bit more just on top of those beads. We'll take our remaining material, do a loose wrap, snug it up, wrap it all the way, almost to that first bead. And now we've kind of got a little bit of conceal, hide those beads a little bit. Um, other thing, why I really like this material uh, from Chocolates is it doesn't look like a little badminton. Um, all the other material that I'm going to be tying onto this fly hopefully won't be getting wrapped up around these beads and around this joint and, and foul it as it's going through the water or while it's being casted. So it does two purposes. It's going to cover up the bead, look like a, a little midsection of the belly, and prevent material from being wrapped up around the wire or the weeds. So got that on there. We're going to take some Grizzly, tan barred Grizzly Marabou. And I'm going to put one on one side, take another and put it on that side, and wrap that on. Cut off this thick part, and that just helps, just give it a little bit more barring. Again, uh, it's I like the look of it, so we'll put that on. And now, what we need to do is put our rabbit strip on. And uh, the the whitey fly is almost all synthetic except for the tail back here, the saddle hackle. And just to keep a little bit with fly fishing tradition, we're going to use some natural material. And I really like the look of the rabbit in the water. Some of the cons about using rabbit are. After you use it, it can uh, harden and it, it dries funky. You get it back in the water and it'll reconstitute into looking something fishy. So it is heavy too, picks up a lot of water. So sometimes in casting it can be a chore. But what we want to do here is secure this rabbit strip on the back of this front hook and the tips right here I want just to overhang and go on top of the saddle hackle so that's about the <clears throat> the right spacing just figure it out part it measure it stick it on there and just get the tips right here so that it fits over just overhangs the saddle hackle I got that parted and what I'll do is wet that a little bit to keep the fibers 
apart just so I can see the, the rabbit leather <clears throat> right there. Put that on the shank. Make sure that my thread is right where it needs to be so I can make a, a wrap up over the top and it'll be right there. And there's one. Move that out of the way. Two, three, let's go four, and that last wrap kind of tight. And then one, two, three, that locks it down. Take a little bit of glue and just hit it. It doesn't have to be a lot right there. Now, I'll take a pearl chenille. can be any pearl chenille, really. White. Let's go uh, 10, 10 inches. And right behind the, the weight, let's put it right there. And again, I take my index finger, and I like to wrap this on the bottom of the fly, and I'll hold it underneath the shank as I'm wrapping. One, two, three. Put that out of the way. And this is almost in every streamer these days. And it's the UV Polar Chenille that comes in a lot of different colors. This is gold. And we're going to take... I usually, when I'm doing a dozen of these, I'll, it'll be the material, the lengths, are a lot less. But for today's purposes, I'll uh, make it a little bit longer so there's more to hang on to. Well, we've got about 8 inches there. So let's tie that in same place and we'll, we'll take that right to the rabbit and move our thread up now we're going to wrap the chenille I'll do a double wrap right to begin with because I want this front section especially this part is usually the thickest part of the fish right here in the middle and it tapers down to the head so, you can double wrap this if you'd like. There's no hard and fast rules, like we said. Um, right at this point, need to leave a little bit of room at the front of this to tie more material and to be able to still get the head over that weight. So right as you get to about, I don't know, the last third of that weight. Let's tie this off. Let's tie the chenille off anyway. Come up over the top, wrap, lock it, cut that off. Okay, we've got our chenille wrapped on there tight. And now it's time to take this UV polar chenille and wrap it up forward towards the eye. So we're going to take a, a wrap and we're going to leave enough space in between these wraps that I can do a couple of the par markings with our marker. We're going to go back over and do that. So that winds up right there. Took about two wraps, come up over the top, do another wrap, another wrap, and then pull all this back almost like you were going to do a reverse wrap on some fibers. That's locked down. Now let's hurry and grab our uh, marker. And again, it's the W5 from Copic, warm gray. And we're going to be able to get maybe two markings right here on this particular one. You have uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is we have enough of that under the, the chocolates minnow wrap here that I can put a little bit of a mark on that hit it once there right in between the UV polar chenille and that's what it will end up looking like we'll do it back on uh, my side hit that and then we're going to use this purple metallic again and just for the heck of it, we're going to go right in the center of those gray dots and make a purple mark for a little bit of contrast. Do I think the fish care <laughs> if that's on there? Not at all. But I like it. So, there we go. Now, I'm just going to let this rabbit 
hang for a minute and we're going to go back to this minnow wrap again we're going to go just a little bit wider maybe five sixteenths on the bottom here of width make a cut get our right width and this is going to be the belly of our fly and I'm going to take our toothbrush again and brush this out so it's a little more full and doesn't look like a bunch of uh, posts this is really cool stuff it's holds its shape really well doesn't suck up any water and it does have that purple uh, UV uh, flash in there and I really like this so got our fly turned upside down part this just a little bit just like that move it right up on top of the belly of this hook and just get it where you want to take a loose wrap right over the top and then tighten that down then I'll wrap up just a little bit and make sure that that's secure it's not going anywhere we can take our uh, toothbrush and just brush this out again and there we go now let's flip this upside down and uh, that rabbit stuck there now there's a couple ways to secure this rabbit um, you can after you wrap it on the back of the hook you can do another wrap right in the middle but you have to do that wrap in the middle before you take your white pearl chenille all the way to the front I'm not going to do it. I've got it secured in the back. I'm going to take this all the way up to the front to the eye of the hook and just make one wrap there. And I like to have a lot of the material coming out the back right up here on top of this head. And so I'm not going to part the rabbit right here and secure it. I'm going to leave all that hair right there and wrap right up over the top of the hair. So I've got my thread in place where I want to make my first wrap over and it's about an eighth of an inch to five thirty seconds back from the, the, uh, the eye of the hook there. So I'm going to pinch it down tight, make a loose wrap because if I, if I go really tight here, the thread will pull all this hair because we didn't part it. And it will pull it off to the side. So make a loose wrap and then cinch down gradually. Uh, one, two, three. Pull this rabbit back. One, two, three. Really locks that rabbit down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of glue right now in case I was to forget I was just thinking about hey I better glue this so I'll do that now so I don't forget and then take your scissors come right down off of the thread and cut that pretty close I got it uh, enough to do another one here that's why I left it so long the whole way through and we've got our belly nicely um, I could stop the fly right now but I'm gonna put some olive barred rubber legs on here and this has the gold the gold fleck in it I'm, I'll take two strands and I'm going to seat this right by the rabbit leather on the side get it where I want it I don't want these to splay apart I want them to to stay pretty close together and I'll come right in front of the rabbit strip there's some room there make a loose wrap make a little bit tighter wrap and then I'll on my side I'm gonna pull these pretty tight and come right up over on top of the rabbit right behind the rabbit now that's secure bring my thread back down right behind the eye 
Pull that tight and then come up on the rabbit and that locks it down. And I'm going to cut these pretty short. Uh, this one this one just broke anyway, but I don't want these long enough to where they come down and get trapped behind that hook. A lot of times when your material is long as it's swimming or you're casting it, it will come down and it will go behind the hook. And that's okay. Uh, sometimes you, you might have to stop just for a minute and when you're fishing and, and readjust your fly. So I'll cut this side the same distance. Now we have some of that on. I'm just going to do one more. I'm going to put some of this pink on. This pink flash. I'm not going to tell you the exact make or, or whatever of this stuff because I don't want you to get hung up on it like you think, oh I've got to have this stuff to tie this fly. Whatever flash works good for you will work on, or, or in the area that you're fishing, use that. So I've got this, this is just going to add a little bit of color to the fly. And I will move my fly upside down because those rubber legs are heavy. And I have to fight them as they, they want to fall down. So if I turn the fly upside down and just let them hang, I can put my fly, or my flash, right in the middle of the fly where I, where I want it. And I don't have to fight the rubber legs. I'm going to take one wrap, two wraps, right by the eye. And then bring my thread up on top behind that collar of the rabbit. That locks in that side. Bring the thread back down to the eye of the hook. Move this over. Bring it right there. And then lock it down behind that part of the rabbit that we tied down. And then let's cut this to the right length. You cut it wherever you want to. I'm going to cut it this just a little bit longer because it's, it's not as heavy and probably won't fall down and get locked behind the hook. But if it does, it's just, it's, they can rearrange it easily. So that will that'll pretty much do it for this fly. Now all we have to do is put the head on. First, I want this glue the super glue to go down and penetrate all the way down to the hook shank or at least that's where I, I want it to go. Let's get it all the way all the way up to where we stopped wrapping our thread and just go all the way around. While that's drying, this is a little this isn't an instant dry. This takes a maybe a minute to, to fully dry. And while it's in that drying uh, stage Let's go ahead and tie this thread off. Let's do it one more time just for the heck of it. Done. Make sure it's tight. Trim it. With the hair dryer, let's make sure it's dry. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Okay. Now, I don't use super glue to put these heads on. It just doesn't have enough body and it doesn't fill up that cavity uh, very well. Um, it, just, it doesn't have enough bite. So, what, what I use is this E6000 glue and it has quite a bit of body and when it hardens, boy, it, it has a really good bite inside the head and it's a little flexible, it has some give. So uh, grab something that you can get a good clump of this glue on. Don't want to get it on your hands because it, it is really messy. And it doesn't mix well with the super glue if it's wet. That's why I, I dried it with the hair dryer. So we're going to put one drop right there and get a little bit more. It's about a quarter of a size of a pea worth. We're going to put that a, kind of a bigger glob right in the middle. We want to keep as much weight as we can on the bottom. And once we have that on, you got your head. And I'll put it on at the bottom. Make sure that it's lined up with the hook. 
And if you have a little bit of squeeze out, just grab your, your tool or whatever, pop that off. And there we have a baby whitey. Let that dry. And you're going to have a fly that performs really well, catches the fish. Stick them solid.